I'm going to introduce our first presenter, Carol Sloan, uh, did her residency in 2002. Carol graduated from Skidmore College, and after a year working on her master's in ceramics at the University of Wisconsin, and a few years of travel, she settled down in Maine, raised sheep, designed and made handbags for 25 years. Then, in the 1990s, she returned to her training as an artist and began painting full time. She was a founding and long-term member of the Downtown Gallery in Washington, Maine, and has moved to Rockland in 2017. Uh, without further ado, we'd like to welcome Carol. <laughs> So, before I show you a six minute review of my life's work, I thought I'd describe my six week experience at the Corinna House Residency. That's what it was called back in 2002. Um, the Corinna House, um, this was its original shape. I haven't found out how old it is. The Corinna House was a longtime home and studio of New York artist Robert Semple. And in 1987, when he could no longer travel to the island, he sold his house to Peter and Raquel Bomer. All parties uh, agreed they would convert the building into an artist residency. You can see the addition on the top on the right there. Um, the studio upstairs and a community store downstairs. I stayed in Robert's original home, which was uh, the rooms are upstairs were full of his colorful and eclectic things. Um, Billy Payne opened the Corinna store directly beneath my rooms daily at 5 a.m. The door would bang shut repeatedly and the smell of strong coffee came up through the floorboards. That was my morning wake-up call. <laughs> so um, before this residency, I had developed a body of work about my neighborhood in Washington, Maine, where I had lived and worked and walked for over 25 years. I worked on my personal stash of photographs and made a series of 26-foot-long wall-mounted oil stick scrolls. Um, the spindles could be rotated manually and the action documented the movement of the walking of the landscape using the paper movement. My oil paintings also at that time talked about the passage of time and I worked from my own photographs again. But I superimposed images using different shots from different times of the day or different views of the same location or different scenes that I chose randomly to superimpose. Um, this was before I had a computer but I realize now that multiple ways of seeing was becoming a universal language and I was obviously the product of my environment whether I acknowledged it or not. I promised myself um, that on Monhegan I would work only in plein air unless it was pouring rain. I started each morning, started each morning loaded down with all my stuff, easel, paper, a backpack, stool, and a huge supply of oil sticks. I bushwhacked into the woods looking for a quiet place off the trail where no one could look over my shoulder and I would settle down for the day. Invariably, when I set up my easel, I would discover small bits of paint on the ro rocks at my feet. I worked on primed 140-pound watercolor paper, the same material I used for my scrolls. I named each piece with its date and location. At the end of my six weeks, I had a pretty much filled studio walls of specific um, site landscapes, specific landscapes. Anyway, when I uh, had my open studio on the last day, I was amazed to hear the local people could identify every tree and cove that I needed a map to find. During this residency, my effort to document the passage of time was reinforced in every substantial way. It was the first time I had worked outside directly from nature for any extended period. I learned to anticipate the in inescapable movement of the sun watch the shadows in the woods, and track the shifting silhouettes of the rock and the mosses. Along the shore, I watched the water as it reshaped the sizes of the rocks, making them appear and disappear with the tides. My finished pieces became totally different universes from the ones I had chosen to paint at the beginning of my sit. At a residency in Taos, New Mexico, three years later, my plein air experience paralleled my time on Monhegan, but of course the environment was totally different, and it smelled entirely different. The air was thinner, the light was more intense, and the sky was a totally different blue. I was in the high desert. 
Here the light effect, um, actively redefined the contours of the landscape, spotlighting the fields and the mountains of rocks and pinyon trees, and then hiding them back in canyons of deep shadow. My work was still alive with constant changes, but instead of avoiding the tourists looking over my shoulder, I had to keep an eye out for the rattlesnakes when I settled down to work. During this same time, I started a series of oil paintings that I called Domestic Partners. By now, I was hooked on the process of superimposing images to create a specific effect. I began what became a huge collection of photographs of my friends interacting with their pets. I wanted to capture the deep spirit of love and affection they had for each other. This was intended as a subjective exploration painting to imply the psychological movement, not exactly unfocused, but one that was intuitive and intentionally not clear. <clears throat> In the last two years, I have been making scrolls again, this time with drawings. My childhood games, this scroll, is a scroll on heavy paper that I first completely painted with blackboard paint. The unfixed lines on this painted surface will inevitably shed chalk as it is scrolled and re-scrolled. This is made to be a provocatively ephemeral piece. It can be washed clean and drawn on again, of course, just like any blackboard, and made into a totally different story. A bonus for making this piece was the multiple hilarious conversations I had with friends about their most favorite childhood play, happy times that we shared and laughed about. In late 2016, I made a dozen large drawings I called Processing Disarray. I own a collection of old dolls and I use them as models, as metaphors, to be the generic human form. I added shadows of tools and mechanical parts to insert some implied stress to the environment. These drawings were my response to listening to the news when I worked, which was becoming particularly painful. These first doll drawings compelled me to make a 36-foot long drawing in a scroll form that I called suspension. As I worked, the figures became more and more about floating and overlapping movement. Drawing them and redrawing them again, I found myself asking in the hide and reveal way that is a scroll, how are we here in this place now? Why are we being swept along with such a soupy fog? Have we fallen under some sort of immobilizing spell? This was a pretty depressing conversation I had going on in my head, but the work was beautiful and compelling at the same time. Luckily, I only had 36 feet to fill. I am currently working on some three-dimensional pieces using dolls again. I'm incorporating figures into sculpture, and I plan to make paintings from the pieces I create. I'll let you know what comes next. <laughs> Carol, before you escape, we're going to break a little bit from the Pecha Kucha format and uh, do a little question and answer. Is there anybody who has any questions? We're going to do a little Q&A between each artist's presentations. Carol, how, how big are the, the drawings of the dolls, not the ones on the scroll, but the first one? The first one, they're like 24 by 28. Just, you know. yeah. Yeah. Yes? Um, the scrolls, is, that, is there a religious connotation in that? Um, it became kind of, that was not my intent. My intent was when I started drawing that I never had enough space. I kept making the paper bigger. But then I had to figure out a way to keep the paper, you know, on the wall. Right, right. And um, so I, I made, the, when I first did it, I, I used um, mop handles. And um, when I fixed them to the wall and I was done with the first scroll, I looked at them and I went, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I made a Torah. Right, so um, it's it's it does in a way. It's kind. It's all about you know what's going on in my head. So that's kind of what religion is, I guess, in a way. You know, contemplation. Right. Yeah. Do you encourage people to um, to turn? To yeah. Small? Well, ideally, if if I were an engineer, I would have it figured out right. Um, I had these scrolls down at, at the Portland Museum. And I had intended for people to be able to use them, but they would call me every once in a while and say, they aren't working anymore, come up, you know. So somebody had unscrolled them wrong, the wrong way and the, and the screw had loosened. And, but I mean, ideally, yes. Yeah. What is the height of the screw? These are like 22 inches of paper. Yeah. Yeah, and, the, and the wood is made from um, old bedposts, so they're actually, it's quite a bit long.
down here mm -hmm. and a little bit more at the top. So they're, you know, substantial. Okay, no, hi. Your works in New Mexico, were those also oil stick? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing.